Imagine for a moment that you've lived a long and fulfilling life. You're older and you're at the end of your life. You've cherished moments with your children, shared a warmth embrace with a loved one or spouse. You laughed, you cried, you built connections with friends and family. You toiled in various jobs. You explored different faiths and beliefs and relished in the ups and weathered the downs. Now, as you lay in your quiet hospital room, you reflect on the grand tapestry of existence that you've woven throughout these long and fruitful years. In the quiet of your thoughts, you begin to accept that your journey is nearing to an end. And then you pass on. Suddenly, a blinding flash of light erupts as you remove the virtual reality goggles from your eyes. Sitting beside you is a friend, and he starts laughing at you because of your game score, like teenagers do. You're no longer the aged soul at the end of a well-lived life. Instead, you're a 16-year-old gamer in the year 2437, a time where a reality game or a simulation has taken on an entirely new meaning. The life that you thought that you lived for decades was, in fact, nothing more than a 15-minute gaming session within a mind-bending, elaborate simulation game. Are we just players of a cosmic game living out someone else's creation or simulation, or is there more to this story? Is reality as we know it a mere illusion or a computer-generated construct? Welcome to a world where reality isn't quite as it seems. As we explore the concept, of simulation theory. People of West Topulus, hear me now and know that I am your God. Bow down to me. Now prepare to be punished. You're going into the lake of fire. You're going into the volcano. You're... What's that? Oh, we're online? Oh, sorry about that. Hey guys, it's me, Wes. I was just correcting a few of my sims. <laughs> sorry about that. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. You can do that right here. All right, so here we go with the evidence proving simulation theory, unveiling the matrix. Enjoy. Go back to correcting my sims. Now, pre how did you get out of the lake of fire? How did you do that? Get back in the lake of fire. Bad sim, bad sim. To grasp the concept of simulation theory, we must journey back to the roots of this intriguing idea, the theory that suggests our reality may not be what it seems. It's a notion that has captured the imagination of scientists and philosophers and tech visionaries alike. But where did it all begin? The origins of simulation theory, as we know it today, can be traced back to the year 2003, when a philosopher named Nick Bostrom published a groundbreaking paper that would shake the very foundations of our understanding of reality. Bostrom's ideas didn't just cause ripples, they sent shockwaves through the academic world. In this now iconic paper, he proposed a possibility that stretched beyond imagination and into the realm of the profoundly serious. You see, Bostrom's paper suggested that the existence of an advanced civilization is capable in creating simulations was not merely a remote or bizarre concept, but genuinely a substantial possibility. In this theory, we and everything around us, from the grand cosmos to the thinnest particles around us, might be the product of this advanced civilization simulation, a complex and hyper-realistic game, if you will. When reading the paper, you come to believe that the simulation argument Bostrom lays out is, has three possibilities in which he argues at least one of them must be true. They are number one, the human species is very likely to go extinct before reaching a post-human stage. Number two, any post-human civilization is extremely unlikely to run a significant number of simulations of their evolutionary history or variations thereof. And three, we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. 
Now, if we reject either one of these two proposals, Bostrom argues that we must accept his third one. And that's the final proposal that is almost certainly we're living in a simulation. It follows the belief that there is a significant chance that we will one day become post-humans who run ancestor simulations is false, unless we are currently living in a simulation. It would seem that Elon Musk's startling claim that the chances that we live in base reality is one in billions can now be replaced by a much more conservative one in three, making simulation theory very real and very plausible. Bostrom's paper was so compelling that it transcended the academic world in 2016. The New Yorker reported that the Silicon Valley had become somewhat obsessed with the idea back then. It was even rumored that even two unnamed billionaires after reading Bostrom's paper had secretly assembled teams of scientists to probe the very fabric of reality, attempting to discern whether they could somehow break free from the constraints of the simulated existence. Renowned technology magnate Elon Musk, the genius behind things like SpaceX and Tesla, has also been public about his fascination with simulation theory. These ideas sparked not only the intense discussions in the academic circles, but permeated through popular culture, giving birth to movies and books and cartoons and countless debates on the true nature of our own existence. So why has this seemingly bizarre and far-fetched notion been taken so seriously by prominent scientists, thinkers, and tech giants? Well, in 2023, a recent scientific paper by physicist Melvin Vopson from the University of Portsmouth presented intriguing evidence that brings us even closer to the heart of simulation hypothesis. You see, the simulation hypothesis, in essence, dares us to suggest that our entire universe, everything we consider to be objective and objective reality might be nothing more than an astonishing advanced virtual reality illusion. Dr. Vopson points out that in this idea isn't confined to the theoretical debates, but it's gaining traction in the scientific circles and even in the entertainment business. And here's where it gets truly fascinating. Dr. Vopsen has observed that recent developments in information physics seems to align with the simulation hypothesis. Information physics, even at the molecular level, this information seems to be a common link. It appears that it may hold more profound role in the universe than we previously imagined. Dr. Vopsen boldly suggests that the information itself could be the elusive dark matter that constitutes nearly a third of our universe. In his earlier research, he proposed that elementary particles, the thinnest building blocks that we know of, store information about themselves, akin to the way DNA stores genetic information about humans. You see, in a groundbreaking development in 2022, Dr. Vopsen introduced the scientific community to the law of infodynamics. The law postulates that Entropy, which measures the degree of randomness or disorder, is an isolated information system. Either it remains constant or it decreases over time. In simpler terms, the law suggests that there's an underlying mechanism governing information systems. This is in stark contrast to the more mainstream belief of randomness. Dr. Vopsen is quoted saying, I knew that this revelation had far-reaching implications across various scientific disciplines. So you might be asking yourself, what evidence is there for simulation theory? Well, there's some intriguing evidence and paradoxes that have kindled the flames of simulation theory over the years. A few of these things are things like the double slit experiment or the Mandela effect, even Fermi's paradox. Consider the famous double slit experiment, the cornerstone of quantum mechanics. You see, this experiment demonstrates that particles like electrons or photons exhibit perplexing behavior when they're observed or when they're watched. When not under observation or not being watched, these particles behave as waves. But when we measure them or observe them when we're looking, they transform into particles. 
Why is that? This leads to a profound question about the fundamentals of nature and the entire universe. Are we merely players in a reality that behaves differently when observed? And then there's the Mandela effect. This curious phenomenon suggests that our collective false memories are far more common than we all might think. People recall events, names, and details differently from what historical records tell us, as if our own memories and reality itself are out of sync somehow. People swear about Jiffy peanut butter back in the day, but it's actually called Jiff. And we all remember the Monopoly man had a monocle, but he doesn't. Fruit of the Loom icon, it used to have a cornucopia behind the fruit, right? Right? And then there's Darth Vader in the iconic line, Luke, I am your father, is probably one of the greatest lines in Star Wars. However, the line is simply, no, I am your father. Could this misalignment be a glitch in the simulation, altering our perspectives, correcting the code in the background? How can we all remember the same information, but differently? And why is it changing? Now ponder for a moment Fermi's paradox. The universe is vast, with billions of galaxies and potentially habitable planets, yet we found no signs of intelligent extraterrestrial life. Enrico Fermi, the physicist whom this paradox is named after, famously asked, where is everybody? This paradox challenges the assumption that life should be abundant in the cosmos. But what if we were the only beings that were designed and programmed into our own simulated reality? The most persuasive argument in favor of simulation theory is the rapid advancement of our own technology. You see, virtual reality and computer simulations have come incredibly far in such a short time, making it plausible that a civilization more advanced than ours could create a realistic simulated universe. With AI, virtual reality, quantum computing, and self-learning long language algorithms progressing at lightning speed, these possibilities of creation of a realistic simulation grows by the day. Could our reality be somehow someone else's pet software project? And let's stop and think about the ethical dilemmas that simulation theory invokes. If we're capable of creating our own realistic simulations, what are the ethical boundaries? Is it right to create a simulated world with conscious entities, even if they are just lines of code? These questions force us to reflect on the moral compass guiding our technological advancements. Now imagine the concept of a higher intelligence. If we are all the creation of advanced civilization, what does that suggest about our creators? Are they deities in their own right, crafting worlds and beings after their own image? If simulation theory is true, wouldn't the programmer be considered a god? This notion challenges traditional religious narratives and opens us up to avenues of thought in our place in the cosmos. Simulation theory also casts a shadow over our religious and philosophical beliefs. It beckons us to question the divine and the metaphysical. If we're products of a grand simulation, where does spirituality fit into this digitally rendered existence? You see, it beckons us to question the divine and the metaphysical. You see, if we're products of a grand simulation, where does spirituality fit into this digitally rendered existence? These questions stir debates and prompt soul-searching among the faithful and the philosophers. As we grapple with these profound questions, we confront the very essence of our own existence. The ethical conundrums of simulation creation, the tantalizing idea of higher intelligence, and the reimagining of our own religious and philosophical landscapes challenges our own perceptions of reality in ways we'll never imagine. One of the most mind-bending aspects of simulation theory is the question of our own identity. You see, since we have no definitive way of knowing if we exist in base reality or are we within an intricate simulation, it raises a compelling paradox. Nick Bostrom's final conclusion are that it's about 20% likely that we live in a simulated world. 
So what you consider reality might not just be real at all. Chances are, you and me, we're living in a simulation. As we conclude, ponder this. The world before you, the life you're living now, the reality you hold dear may not be what it seems. The philosopher David Calmers reminds us of the core challenge. In the cosmos of all these simulations, any evidence that we gather could simply be part of the simulation itself. Whether our existence is a mere digital projection or an absolute reality is a question that might forever elude us. In the end, we'll find out for ourselves in a universe where the distinction between the authentic and the simulated blurs into a captivating enigma. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm Wes, and this has been Why Wes Why. And do us a favor, if you had fun or you learned anything, like and subscribe. You can do that right here. And don't forget to share it too. These things go a long way for a small channel like me, and it really helps. I appreciate it. And let me know your thoughts below on simulation theory. I'm curious to know what you think. See you next time. And until then, keep questioning, keep exploring, and always ask, why, Wes, why?